everybody, it's Lex from PDQ.com. PDQ and A today. You ask the questions and I quickly deflect the answers to Colby and crew. <laughs> Should we jump right in? What do we got, guys? Okay. Dear Lex and crew, PDQ inventory question. Is there a way to filter or search the detailed summary for machines that are marked as needing a reboot? I've been trying to stay on top of it, but have noticed quite a few machines that want to reboot for pending file rename operations, which isn't the priority. Thanks, Frederick. Hey, Frederick. <clears throat> um, well, let's just take a look. In inventory, we have a dynamic collection called Reboot Required for Servers and Workstations. If I double click and open that up, we're looking in the computer table for needs a reboot is true. Now, uh, interestingly enough, if I go take a look at computers, uh, to filter that for the file rename, uh, you'd have to go look as a, in a SQL, as a SQL, you'd have to do a SQL uh, report or query to find that information. Am I saying that right, Colby? Yep. I mean, it, we don't have any real good way to display it other than do it in a SQL report. And to get your SQL reports, you go to reports, New report, SQL report. It's going to pop up, and then you go to your computer table, and then down to reboot information. Uh, it's detailed reason for reboot and simple reason for reboot. There you go. Detailed reason for reboot right there. So <clears throat> you'd have to do that to get that done, and then obviously after you find that information, you can filter on it. Thanks, Colby. Oh, great Lex and crew. PDQ link question. How is the security of the connection compared to a regular hardware firewall VPN solution? We use WatchGuard Firebox. Thanks, Federico A. All right. Warm your fingers up. Pop open that Google. Uh, I think I'm going to say this right. We use SSTP um, in PDQ link, so you'll need to make a comparison with uh, your WatchGuard Firebox to find out how that's done, and then... Uh, and you make comparison that way. Any uh, thing you want to add to that, Josh, by chance? Nope, nope. I think you hit it right on the head. Um, so SSTP rides over HTTPS, much like uh, a lot of SSL VPNs for um, your end clients. So it's just going to be what are you hosting off of that Firebox and what are your security needs? Cool. Thanks, man. What else we got? All right. Dear Lex, a question about PDQ Link and security. How do we lock things down so that those using Link can only see the resources we want them to, i.e. PDQ server and possibly a specific DC for password changes? Sincerely, Chris L. Um, I believe you need to do that through network policy. Am I, um, again, I'm going to defer to Josh on this. Josh? Yep, that's a network policy server. Um, you can configure rules and policies within that that govern when those clients dial into the RAS server, what resources they have access to. Um, so the, the Microsoft docs on that are actually pretty straightforward. Um, so that's where, where I would head to, to start to configure those policies. Again, you can scope that there. I mean, that's where you're going to want to do all that. I'm curious on that one. Since it is using the, the access to the link based on an AD group, could mm -hmm. they have the file shares that they want to have access to be allowed based on that AD group? Yeah, um, so the, the AD group is going to allow the connection, and but then the rest of their Active Directory attributes are still going to apply. Okay. So if that user group had access to, you know, file server, that's going to still allow them once they've dialed in and authenticated on RAS. Um, I think that question may be more tailored to, you know, I want to scope what access I have on like the protocol level. Mm -hmm. So if I only want SMB to and from PDQ to point inventory, or I only want access to these certain individual hosts, um, that's all going to be network policy. Okay. Right on. Okay, next question. Dear Lex, I have an auto download deployment scheduled. It ran fine and offline PCs went into the retry queue as expected, but there have been no actual retries. They all say pending. Have I done something wrong? I <laughs> uh, can't even pronounce that, but yeah, okay. So when it comes to your retry queue, a couple of things, options, preferences. Let's just go take a look at offline settings under deployments. There we go. Retry queue. 
Uh, personally, the first thing, I would not set your retry um, queue globally. That means every deployment you're going to do is going to be requeued, um, <clears throat> unless you want to do it that way. I prefer to do it on a deployment by deployment basis. So the things you want to check with your retry queue is one, how many times has it run? What's it set to? Have you set it to run specifically, you know, in this case, uh, you know, put line, uh, these are running, you know, if I were to set that here, I mean, the settings very similar um, at the deployment level, once every hour for 72 tries, which would be three days, make sure you're not overrunning that. Uh, any other thoughts, Colby, on that as to where to look for why they might not be retrying? Um, I don't know that I've uh, ever encountered that before. Um, I do know that you uh, there should be a field that shows you, uh, like, I think it's called like next run or something like mm -hmm. that, that uh, should say when it's going to kick off again. And if it's like hitting that but not firing, um, and that kind of sounds like maybe a bug to me. Uh, maybe reach out to uh, support at pdq.com. Let me, uh, we'll just send one right now real quick. I'll deploy. Hey, Go ahead. Lex, I had an idea. Sure. Um, especially if you've got inventory, um, I would suggest targeting with that and the heartbeat trigger rather than using that retry queue. Absolutely. It's a much more elegant and yep. efficient way to do that. But here's <clears throat> here's the offline settings. Let's uh, put it in a retry queue. I'm going to deploy it as something that doesn't exist. And Lex, the... Uh, uh, question asker i guess said mm -hmm. the field just says pending field says pending yeah all right it's not going to do with deploy now okay queued it's not going to find it's going to go to retry queue okay rip van winkle retry queue zero tries seven two remaining added to queue 10 seconds last try and it's saying pending huh that's i don't know i have not done a lot of uh after we came out with a heartbeat schedule, I really haven't needed the retry queue. So maybe sub submit that one to support. We'll have to dig a little deeper, find out why they might be pending. Can, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, if you use the retry queue frequently, uh, can you just type a one in the, uh, in the chat? I just want to get kind of a feel because a lot of people use retry queue when they could be using heartbeat. Yeah, absolutely. And so I'm just curious. That's all. I'd be happy to show you guys how to do a heartbeat. Yeah, do. Should I do that? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> we'll just go in and again, we will do a deployment of Chrome. Deploy, new schedule. When you go to put your triggers in, right, obviously name this Chrome. Please add some targets. That's always a good thing to do, too. <clears throat> So let's say we're gonna run this weekly on, we'll say Fridays, after hours at 10, 11 p.m. And to get the machines that are offline, you add a heartbeat. I just like to always make sure that it has an opportunity to run scheduled once. So I usually start that the Monday after. What was that? Oh, thanks, man. So anyway, um, that's going to, anybody who's offline, when they come from an offline to an online state in inventory, which Right here is your state, so that would be a no. Let's say Alan Rails was offline, was a no. When it becomes a yes, um, it takes about two minutes approximately, but it'll check in with deploy and say, what do I need since the last time I was on? Oh, I was supposed to get Chrome or whatever, and we'll deploy at that moment, which is a great way to do it. So uh, again, you know, it's another way to do it. I find it much more elegant, and it may take care of the pending issue because you're just going to catch people when they come online instead of trying to force feed that retry every hour or whatever interval you've got in a retry queue. Right on. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, should we take another one? Yeah. <clears throat> Dear Lex, how can we follow the evolution of PDQ Link? For example, the solution of the agent always showing after every reboot bug. Is there any blog where we can see the changes and improvements of the product? Thanks, Federico A. I do think we, we've got a, we do have a blog on that, don't we, Josh? Yeah, so anything that, that comes out with Link will likely have a post in just blog.pdq.com or pdq.com slash blog, either one you want to use there. Um, so that's where those will come out. And then with any other release or anything that happens, there will be release notes. And I believe we'll probably send emails to you if you're on your subscribe to the email list on those. I would imagine so. All righty. Okay. You get to talk slower, Josh. You answered that way too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was beautiful, man. Thank you. 
And the next question, we're getting a lot of uh, link questions today. Uh, PDQ link, is it possible to change the port that it uses? My firewall admin is raising a red flag with port 443. Thanks, B. Myers. <coughs> Can we change the port in PDQ link? No. Sorry, guys, you can't. It's the one that we use. Yeah, there's something to be of caution about. Um, mm -hmm. So you'll find some documentation online that says, yes, you can change that listening port for SSTP. Um, when you find that, that's going to be the internal listening port. So you can put it behind a reverse proxy or something like that. But that external connection is over HTTPS 443. Yep. Um, I'd be curious to know why there's a concern with 443. Let us know in the chat. Maybe Josh can answer that one for you. But yeah, you can't change that port. Uh, it's not, not with the design, it's the underlying product that we use. Yep, that, that absolutely. Can't mm. yep. <clears throat> Next question. Dear Lex, can you have a trigger for an automatic deployment be based off IP addresses? For example, we have a large installer we want to deploy, but to only go to users in the office IP range 10.xxx. Triple X. That was an interesting mm. movie. And not over the VPN 192.XXX. That's the sequel to the movie, I guess. To avoid any issues with home internet speed and reliability issues. Sincerely, Dean Martin. Dean himself, huh? Dino. Mr. Mr. Martin? Nice. <clears throat> Is there a way to do that? Um, I've never tried. Colby? I mean, I know we can restrict 192 by going in and saying, you know, don't allow... Um, uh, you know, I, I've got an idea for you, Lex. Hit me up, man. All right. So new collection, new dynamic collection. Okay. Let's see if I can remember this without having an inventory in front of me. You got it. Uh, so new dynamic collection and uh, IP address starts with. Oh, okay. You know what? I was just trying to think about how to do it and deploy. This is the way IP address starts with. And then you can use that collection as a uh, condition on your package. Or does not start with 192.168. There you go. Man, glad you guys are here today. That's why you have a crew. That is right. And I'm here too. <laughs> you guys make me look like you should be up here and not me, actually. So that's, yeah, thanks, Josh. Mm -hmm. That's the way to do it, hit collection. The other thing you can do if you want to restrict, like I was mentioning, you can go into preferences and deploy and go to uh, target filters under exclusions and put 192.168 star and then it but will I think not that becomes like a global that is a global just that a is true package. you will not get any packages going there so a couple ways to go there so i like uh, josh's method better but if you wanted to exclude it you can do it there <clears throat> what else we got all right Dear Lex, we use AnyConnect for many work-from-home users, and PDQ Deploy and Inventory works well. But most sales reps do not use the corporate network as most resources move to the cloud, plus the fact that they're salespeople. But anyway, can PDQ Link connect and still use AnyConnect? What happens if a user is on PDQ Link and then connects using AnyConnect? Thank you. Short -ton. <laughs> Hey, hmm. Josh, AnyConnect and link similar types of connections right well it depends how about we just start this entire answer with it depends it depends <laughs> um, okay so link out of the box is going to do split tunneling mm -hmm. so lo the too long didn't read version of that is all of the routing is going to happen client side so if you are on a connected client and you run uh, route print you know, you're right. Now that I think about this, yeah, go, go yeah, with you, this. You run that route print, you're going to see all of those routes that are built either by link or by any connect, and then they're going to have a metric. Mm -hmm. um, so when you've got them both connected, that lowest cost metric is going to win for routing. Yeah. Um, so that's what's going to happen is it's going to take that path, but you're going to also have redundant paths at that point should a path fail. So basically, whichever has the lowest cost route, that's where it's going to travel. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, thanks, Josh. It makes absolute sense. Absolute sense to me. Thank you. PDQ link question. Is it meant to allow users to remote into their systems at the office, or can they use it to connect to our network and access our files and resources? John Neiman. 
Well, John, I'm going to go with yes on that. They can connect in <laughs> if you've got it set that way. <laughs> uh, I, I can chime in a little bit here. You should John, chime in. A, you know this much better than I do. So I think this becomes like a bandwidth question, right? Yeah. Um, so RDP traffic, if they're just going to connect to link and then have RDP traffic, is fairly minimal. Um, but then if I've got a laptop at my house and I'm going to access all these file shares, like let's maybe say I'm an uh, architect for, let's pretend, and I'm working with mini gig CAD files. Um, RDP is probably going to be the better solution, right? Because then I'm accessing them local and I'm not trying to shove all that through a VPN connection. Um, but maybe you're just accessing things like PDFs or something small, then either way. Um, so that's kind of a bandwidth and latency question and the connection that that link server's on. So it, obviously it is possible to connect things internally, mm -hmm. right? Again, should you, it depends on what you're doing. Yeah. Right on. Next one. What else we got? Dear Lex and party of favorites, how are the targets AD synced by hostname or GUID? I've reinstalled a machine after removing it from the domain and deleting the tombstone, but its PDQ history and collection membership is still attached to the machine. How can I clean that up without resorting to renaming my clients? Sincerely, Dennis H. One more time on that. Okay, is it syncing with the AD GUID or the computer name? Everything is based off computer name because we do keep, we assign it an ID on our end, which is not the GUID. So it's computer name is how we do it here with inventory. Colby, any thoughts? I mean, any more insight into that? Um, I believe the, uh, uh, I believe we do do everything by host name and uh, I believe a big reason for that is so that we can support workgroup computers. Um, I think I remember hearing that our, our previous product, uh, AA Console, or might have been just called Admin Arsenal, uh, did uh, use 80 GUIDs, but it, it couldn't support workgroup computers. Hmm. Uh, so as far as uh, what to do in that situation, um, what uh, is Josh, do you have any recommendations? I'm wondering what the... What your AD sync mode is set to. Are you import only? Because if you're import only, you can keep running that sync over and over and that computer is never going to go no matter what changes you make Active Directory side. That is true. Um, just make sure the ones that are AD syncing, uh, here's our AD sync, right? Preferences, AD sync. I've got mine set as full and delete. So if it's not an AD or full, which will delete, if it's not an AD, it'll delete it. If you were to do a mixed sync or an import only, a, a mixed sync, it would take anything from Active Directory that is an AD sync and add or delete, but anything you add otherwise will maintain will be maintained here. So a uh, way to see how you've added those, if you go up to the left corner here and you added from, and you go add that in there, and I'm just going to go fix that pass so you can see it. You'll notice all of mine have come from an AD sync. Oh, and there's the default. That's the one that was installed or came with the install. So... These are all AD sync. If I were to add one by name, let's go add a computer by name. Rip Van Winkle, which doesn't exist, but I'm going to add it anyways. Maybe, boom, there it is. Rip Van Winkle has been added by name. You'll see right there. So that's how you can tell how it's been added. And then again, you know, check your preferences on what type of sync you've got. Another place that you can go look. If you want to look, there's an AD sync log that mm -hmm. is generated. Um, that's in program data, admin arsenal, PDQ inventory, and then the log file is adsync.log. Um, it can be kind of gnarly depending on how many computers you've got in there, um, but a good old fine string can help you out there. Right on. Take another one. Well, that was a collective effort. <laughs> good job, guys. Everybody got a point. We should have been keeping points today. Mm. Anyway. Absolutely not. <laughs> for my self-esteem. <laughs> Dear Lex, have you found a way to specify which VLAN to hand out PDQ link IP addresses from via DHCP? I added a second NIC on my server in a different VLAN, but I don't see a way to specify which NIC to use in the RAS or NPS. Or is there a better way to handle this other than putting the server in a user VLAN? Thanks, Ben S. 
You know, I should just get off camera and we'll let Josh come up here and answer all these <laughs> PDQ link. You want to come up, Josh? Um, yeah. No, all right. No. Let me just swap spots with Josh because we're doing link. He is the expert, so. Lex has officially been kicked off. I think uh, expert is a little little heavy-handed there. Um, You're as expert as we get. Let me try and read that question again. So, you want the, to specify the nick. Um, I'm running through the link setup in my head. I don't know that there's a way you can do it with the link setup. Now, if you want to dive into the RAS server role itself, I think you have some more granular control there. Because remember, link is just there um, to get the baseline functionality up. If you want to get more advanced than what link is going to do for you, you've got to get into those server roles. And the documentation is, is pretty good on those. And you can define that there. Um, so again, I would just use link as a starting point and then build your configuration off of that for more complex scenarios like that. You know, nice that's touch. what I would have said <laughs> if I knew. I think, I think that's what he was saying as he walked off, just no one yeah, could hear. I thought so too. All right, next question. While you're up there, Josh, <laughs> any Here updates on adding a permission system for console users? The risk of physical violence for my breaking my packages to, uh, no longer carries any weight when I see my team members once every five months. Sincerely, <laughs> Scott. Hey, Scott, as far as I know, that's still a feature request. Um, don't know when or if it'll be implemented. Um, something you might be able to do as a workaround, unless you've got to share them, is you can use private packages in central server mode, then they're just yours, and then your your teammates can't see them and you don't have to threaten to hit them with a hug bat. <laughs> hope that helps. Well, the <laughs> hug bat always helps. I hope hug bat catches on. I hope every office has their own hug bat. They should. A hug bat should be an office requirement. Hashtag hug bat. Do we have one in in the studio right now? Not in the studio, it's in my office. Oh, ah, okay. well, Jordan's okay. the keeper. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan's got the monopoly on the hug bat. I have the most rage. <laughs> I also uh, recommend exporting your packages into a Git repository. Uh, that way, if anyone ever messes with them, you can just restore from uh, your... It's kind of a backup at that point. But You know, Kobe, I'm going to get you with a hug bat. <laughs> <laughs> also, version control for your packages. Mm -hmm. that's, that's neat. Yep. Indeed. All right, next question. Dear whoever jumps up in front of the camera this time. I've inherited an underutilized PDQ server with 800 devices in the field. With an environment that size, what am I probably not doing that I should? Sincerely, aha. Ooh. Hey, hey, I've got a suggestion. I actually made a video that says what to do when you inherit PDQ deploy and inventory. So if you pull that one up, it takes you through looking at all the schedules, it looks at the packages, things to look for and look at, you know, it gives you a good basis to start. And then from there, I'd say, you know, start searching the videos and, and start playing around. It's pretty, uh, pretty easy to yeah. do. And well, I think Colby just put that link in the uh, chat as well. One thing I would suggest, I don't know if you covered this in the video, Lex, is scan profiles. Um, Scan profiles, you can do some, some things in here that can make inventory just a slow monster. You can do things like scan all of HK local machine, return all of the registry entries for every computer. Um, when you start to multiply that by 800 machines, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. Um, so anything that's gonna returning bulk data that you're not gonna action on, um, I'd probably get rid of. Um, so scan profiles would be my big number one look here first. I just want to add one thing. Before you get rid of it, disable it just in case yeah. something breaks, because then you can put it back. Good point. I did go into that in the in the nice. video, though. Cool. Thanks, Josh. It's yep. a great thing to add. All right, next question. Dear PDQ and crew, how does the other solution, like PDQ Link, you are working on look? What is the development state? Sincerely, Marcel L. Well, Marcel, I think it, at this point, we're still in this information gathering state. Um, it's, it's, you know, is it useful? Is it a useful tool? The feedback, the questions are awesome. They are informative. They help us determine what we're going to do next. Um, so keep them coming. So are you saying we're in a state of denial? <laughs> <laughs> denial? A state of investigation. But yes. I would like to add one thing. If you download PDQ Link, which, by the way, it's a free download uh, through the rest of this year. Once you download it, 
yours, you get to use it, no worries. Um, about 10 days after you download it, you'll receive a, uh, a link for a survey uh, in your email. And we really, like Josh mentioned, we would really love your input because yes. the more input you give us, the uh, the better direction we, we can go to help you. So just a little plug for the survey. Absolutely. All right. Next question. More. Dear Josh, is it possible to do a one-off override to deploy to a computer that is excluded in the target list without removing the computer from the list? Sincerely, Gandalf S. Maybe? Yes. I'm going to look for help. A, a one-off? <laughs> Wouldn't you just do a, a, you can just do a single deployment to that machine? Well, uh, what I believe they're referring to is uh, if you go to uh, options, preferences, and what's it? Uh, yeah, uh, target filters. Uh, okay. So I, I believe they're referring to this exclusions page. Uh, oh, okay. You cannot override this in the in the GUI, but you can in the CLI. Oh. Uh, there is a uh, there's a parameter on the deploy command. Leave it to Colby to know the secret way to do that. Is that help? Yeah, uh, help deploy. Toby, oh. did you write that? Is There's that how you know it was there? Um, I I believe I was involved in uh, in QAing that feature when we added it like a year or two ago. Mm, that's cool. That's a cool feature. I didn't know that existed. Mm, yep, nice little kind of hidden away one. Those Way to go, favorite. Colby. Those are my favorite. <laughs> Way to hide stuff from us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on. Do we have any more questions? Yeah, we have one more. Okay, final question. All right, final question of the day. How do we force the membership update on all collections in PDQ inventory? This is driving me nuts lately. Sincerely, Marcel L. All right, Marcel, are you wanting to see the updates in the GUI, or do you want to update the actual information? If you want to update the information, um, you can go to all computers, you can run a scan profile. If you're just talking about the GUI, um, what happens... Colby, correct me if I'm wrong, is the collection you click is prioritized. They're updating in the background, but the one that you're currently viewing is prioritized to refresh the GUI first. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I believe that is correct. And uh, okay. any time that anything uh, pulls membership data from a collection, such as uh, when you're deploying to a collection or you have a, a schedule or a... Uh, uh, collection condition or anything like that, mm -hmm. that will also update the collection membership first. And, and so you may not see the, the number update in the GUI until you click on it, Okay. but the, the actual membership should, should, I'm crossing my fingers here, should always be up to date when it's used. Yes. And then also when you run a report, doesn't matter what shows in the collections, that's what's in the database at that point in time when it's ran, regardless of what the GUI says. Yes. I, I want to chime in on this, guys. If you want to, you know, uh, full contact IT it, bounce the background service. When it comes back online, it'll update it. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. That's, uh, you know. That is full contact. But, you know, full contact. <laughs> There's no, you know, finesse. It's just, you know, bang, bang, do. Nice. It'll stop it and restart it. So. All right. Uh, Marcel's saying, nope, report does not update. That sounds what? good. Bug then. Well, Marcel, I think you know what to do. At this point. <laughs> Support yep. at pdq.com. Look, everybody, Marcel found another bug. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, we uh, recently introduced a, uh, a team that is dedicated to finding and fixing performance issues. And I believe uh, one of the areas that they are looking deeply into is the, uh, the GUI and things like uh, the the underlying logic of like how collections work and stuff like that. So oh, cool. uh, you, you will hopefully see improvements to that sometime in the near future. Excellent. Cool. All right. All right. Thanks for joining us today, everybody. Uh, got to see Lex and I switch out mid webcast. That was fun. Uh, but uh, join us next week. Thanks. Thanks for joining our webcast today. Congratulations, D. Martin and Johnny M., winners of PDQ Swag. Send us your info at webcast at pdq.com. Thanks again for joining us. Stay safe, and we'll see you back here next week.